At just nine years old, Christina Taylor Greene's life was full and ambitious. She'd been elected to her school student council. She was the only girl on her baseball team, a dancer and a dreamer. She wanted to go to Penn State to be a politician. She told her parents she wanted to help people. Gabe Zimmerman, 30 years old, and Gabby's director of community outreach worked tirelessly for everyone who needed it. He wrote down each name of every person who asked. He loved sports, hiking, and his fiance. Arizona District Court Judge John Rule served the legal system for 40 years, passing one of the toughest immigration laws in the country. The husband and father of three sons, he was described as the hardest working judge in the Ninth Circuit. Dorothy Dot Morris, a retired secretary and homemaker, she loved traveling with her husband, her high school sweetheart of 50 years. He tried to save her life that day when the gunfire rang out, but couldn't. Dot leaves George behind and their two daughters. Dorwin Stoddard tried to protect his wife, Mavi, as well, but died trying to save her. Dorwin was a retired volunteer at his church. Friends of the Stoddards say the couple was the lifeblood of their congregation. Phyllis Schneck, a generous woman who loved to sew and bake for people. Her pastor said she once baked 120 Christmas cookies and would do it again as soon as they were gone. He said the grandmother and mother of three was an example of what everyone can do with the material they are given in life. All of their lives, examples of how life is so precious. January 8, 2011 started out like any other sunny Saturday morning in Tucson, but within a matter of seconds, that tranquil Sonoran setting was shattered by the sound of deadly gunfire. Oh, one, they were shooting that Shock, disbelief, horror, as the scope of the January 8th mass shooting began to unfold. We have about a total of 10 people, maybe more. Oh my God. Just after 10 o'clock in the morning, a gunman opens fire at a Congress on Your Corner event at the Safeway at Ina and Oracle Roads. His target, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, shot in the head at point blank range. Police say within seconds, the accused gunman, Jared Loeffner, fires 31 shots, killing six people and wounding 13 others, including Giffords, who is rushed away in a stretcher in critical condition. Witnesses say bystanders tackled Loeffner as he tried to reload, while first responders rushed to the bloody scene. She was a little girl with big plans. People who knew Christina Taylor Green know she was going to make a difference in the world. Her family is making sure that happens. They started the Christina Taylor Green Memorial Foundation. It's very healing for us. After gunmen took their daughter's life, John and Roxana Green knew they had to keep going for each other, their son, their friends, Christina. We're forgiving through her eyes to a very neat, you know, area of education, you know, and, and the art programs. And athletics. Sports. Those are her three loves. Sports programs. One of the first big projects was a new playground for Christina's school. Then came classroom supplies and a scholarship fund. The foundation has given about $110,000 to schools so far. And we want to make sure that her dreams come true because she was very mature for a nine-year-old and we had a lot of plans and a lot of goals and she had a lot of dreams. And mm -hmm. since all three of us really know what they are because she was so vocal about it, through the foundation, we're gonna make it happen as, as much as we can. Wow. Christina Taylor's butterfly drawings inspired ornaments and jewelry with all the proceeds going to the foundation. And big plans are ahead. Someday, the Greens hope to build a sports facility and a children's theater and leave the legacy they know their daughter would have. Mindy Blake, KOLD News 13, live local late breaking. We've learned from this response on January 8th in many, many ways. Not only as a department, but as individuals, Captain Adam now. Goldberg says that day, even the youngest firefighters and paramedics grew into seasoned veterans working through the chaos. Usually takes some time for a paramedic to get comfortable, to get confident, and to have the skills that the public expects us to have, like secondhand nature. Now, these guys learn that in a matter of two hours. And with that lesson ingrained in their minds, Goldberg says those firefighters now know that each training session really could be the difference between life and death. 
Pima County Sheriff's deputies didn't only secure the scene that day, they also helped treat the wounded. We found that the men and women of the Sheriff's Department responded very professionally. Um, very courageously. Deputies arrived on scene with first aid kits they received six months earlier, similar to those the military uses. Those first aid kits, along with training, have been credited for saving lives January 8th. What we learned is that we have to be prepared for that. And to be prepared, Golder Ranch Fire Chief Randy Carr believes our community needs a dedicated regionalized emergency response system, a frequency to help local first responders know what resources are coming and when, in case they ever have to respond to something like this again. We stood on this lawn as a memorial began to build, and when it came to the condition of Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, we clung to words like cautious optimism. Now, a year later, we can hear from Gabby herself about her continued fight. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting better. Her words don't come as easy, but the impact is not lost. As with each step in her recovery, her strong will moves the community of Tucson and the rest of the country all pulling for her. The initial part of her recovery is what doctors called quick but small. She started by squeezing her husband's hand, then playing with his wedding ring. I would have glossed that over. If I walked into a room and saw someone sort of fumbling a ring, I wouldn't know what to make of that. But when, when Mark told me that, in fact, that's what she would always do when they'd go out to dinner, she'd grab his ring off, her, off his hand and actually start playing with it. That was a regular thing she did that obviously has in, incredible significance. The day President Barack Obama visited Tucson, Giffords opened her eye. And that was a poignant moment. She gained strength. She started standing, even taking a few steps on her own. She was then brought up here to the top of University of Arizona Medical Center so that she could look out over the mountains before she was flown to Tier Memorial Herman Hospital in Houston. She began work almost immediately. Her recovery has doctors and aphasia specialists optimistic. Pelagi Beeson, head of speech, language, and hearing sciences at the University of Arizona, says Giffords can show improvement for years to come. I feel optimistic in terms of, of her continuing to get better. I know that it, that it takes a lot of work, um, and I know that certain things are always going to be difficult, vulnerable. Chris Connolly, who is currently Gifford's speech pathologist at Tier Memorial Herman in Houston, says while the gains aren't always great, they are moving forward. We have seen steady improvement. Giffords has even sent weekly topics from her chief of staff here in Tucson. And with practice, she can now lead her staff in discussions through video conferencing. Where I've heard that she is considered the most positive person in Congress. After knowing her, I understand why. She is, she is a true delight. Giffords' character and strength have been revealed by this tragedy. The nurses who cared for her on January 8th say she was fighting the second she was wheeled into the ICU. I just knew she was gonna be fine. I don't know how to explain that, but I just knew she was gonna be okay. Her fight is far from over, but she's been an inspiration to all of us. I'm Kana Whitworth for KOLD News 13, live local, late breaking. You can't mention January 8th without at least some mention of Jared Loftner. Since the shootings, the only place we've seen Loftner locally is here at the federal courthouse downtown. Legally speaking, the biggest question that remains is whether or not Loftner will ever stand trial, because even up until today, we still don't know. Jared Loftner has been diagnosed as schizophrenic and has spent much of the last year on suicide watch. As such, he's ruled mentally incapable of standing trial, at least for now. In May, an appellate judge cleared the way for him to be forcibly medicated. This after Loftner put on quite a display here in Tucson with several outbursts inside the courtroom. As a result, Loftner was ordered to spend the next four months in a medical hospital for prisoners in Springfield, Missouri. But then in August, when his antipsychotic medication started to take effect, medical officials say Loftner's behavior improved significantly. He ate and slept more regularly, engaged in conversation. He even expressed some remorse for what had happened. In September, Loeffner returned to Tucson to learn if he was finally competent to stand trial. His attorneys argued he should not be held in a prison hospital, nor should he be forced to take antipsychotic medication. But based on their observations, doctors disagreed. They said Loeffner is clearly a danger to himself and to others without medication. That said, a federal judge extended Loeffner's stay at the mental facility another four months. The judge did suggest Loeffner may soon be competent enough to understand the charges against him. But if Loeffner's mental competency cannot be 
restored, the judge must make another decision. He could continue Loeffner's stay at the mental facility indefinitely, or he could even dismiss the charges against him. Sol Masias, KOLD News 13, live local, late breaking. Gabrielle Giffords for Congress. Kind of fun. At some point here over the next several months, she'll make the decision on whether she'll run for re-election or not. It's one of the most debated topics in America. The question on Google gets millions of hits. I recently saw, you know, somewhere that, you know, as far as political figures, after the president, she was like second most talked about person. I told her that recently. She doesn't believe me. But in CD8, she is the most talked about whether Democrat or Republican, engendering a proclamation that she resigned. However, it received only 240 signatures. And Republican Frank Antonori says he may or may not run against her. I would think it would be very difficult to run against her based on the, on the issues regarding the sympathy for, you know, the tragic uh, event that befell her. And, you know, I couldn't really say without looking at the polling data. But it's not just the candidates who are waiting. Many voters will likely take stock of Gifford's recovery before they decide. But many believe voters will not set the bar unrealistically high. I think if she can communicate well enough to be a congresswoman, that's enough. I don't think that she needs to be uh, the kind of candidate that she was in the past. The voters already know who she is and what she stands for. While Giffords continues her rehab, her image continues to be carefully crafted because the day when a decision needs to be made is not too far into the future. Yeah, she'll make the decision whether she's going to run for re-election or not before May. Before May. Yes. And some are saying that decision could come as early as this month or possibly early February, once the boundaries of the new district are established and the number of Democrats and Republicans is known, giving everyone an opportunity to prepare. I'm Bud Foster, KYD News 13, live local late breaking. Each candle, every poster, all the well wishes symbolize the care and compassion of Southern Arizonans pulling together after tragedy shattered our world. Those speak to, you know, the beauty of our community. Roberto Bedoya with Tucson Pima Arts Council has been leading the effort to preserve the message and the meaning behind all these mementos. His office continues to take input on a permanent memorial. No concrete plans yet, but leaders feel that a proper tribute will somehow incorporate these pieces from the public. Sometimes objects associated with a particular incident can trigger that moment of reflection. The items left on the hospital lawn and other locations have been boxed up in storage at University of Arizona Medical Center until a few months ago when they were relocated to a longer term storage facility for safekeeping as long as necessary until the community comes up with an appropriate way to remember and respect everyone whose lives changed on January 8th. You know, it takes time, I mean, for deep reflection to make sure that you, you are responding in the most the best way you can. A year has now passed and it may take many more to build a lasting memorial, but project leaders assure that this display that once lit up our city will shine on again in some form.